I'd like to invite Professor Fatak, who is the uh, brain behind this whole program of uh, teaching uh, a large number of teachers. It started with 1,000, now it's 10,000, and I think he has something more exciting to tell us. Good morning, and welcome to this T10KT workshop, which is unique in one particular sense. Many of you would have participated in some of our earlier workshops. As you know, these workshops and their execution have been funded by MHRD. I have always been looking for a long-term self-sustaining model which can work without government funding. And towards this end, we had conceptualized a situation where the participants are willing to bear their own costs and they are willing to pay a fees to the remote center to take care of the expenses at the remote center. And to begin with, we said nobody need to pay anything to IIT Bombay. We'll continue using the government support. Although eventually, the fees will have to cover that cost as well. That's the only way I believe that we can sustain such efforts for years to come, and not just for two years or three years. Well, this workshop is the first such experiment. I can now share with you the anxiety that many of my colleagues had, who said that people may not pay from their own pockets to participate. They will attend only as long as there is government funding. I believed otherwise, because we had collected a feedback from several teachers who had participated in the earlier workshops. And over one-third of the participants in any workshop had said that they would be willing to spend money from their own pocket for their own expenses, and they would be willing to pay some charges for participating in such a course. I'm not just happy, but I'm proud of all of you. Over 3,400 teachers, which is typically the one-third of the T10KT or 10,000 teachers, which is our maximum limit, are actually showing to the country and to the world that if they see a value in something, they are willing to spend money from their own pocket. My compliments and congratulations. It is indeed this workshop which has given me courage to conceptualize a still larger mission. I will speak about it briefly. We are working on it with the All India Council of Technical Education. But before that, let me comment on communications in general, although I understand that the title of this workshop is technical communication. I do not know how and when the word technical got into the communication because at IIT Bombay itself, the course that we have is, I think, more correctly titled as communication skills or effective communications or whatever. Anyway, communication, when we talk about communication, it is meant for enhancing the quality of human interaction. You know and I know that we all learn from human interaction. In fact, the institution of a teacher is nothing but a human being who facilitates human interaction with other humans participating in the class, and of course with himself and herself, enhancing the engagement and therefore enhancing the learning. So any teaching learning process intrinsically depends upon human interaction. Communication is often called soft skills. I do not know where this term originated. Our management friends are particularly keen to use the word soft skill to generically describe uh, things related to emotional quotient, things related to interpersonal skills, etc., etc. I never believe that there is anything soft about these skills. In fact, recently in a, in a workshop in Washington, a Harvard professor said they must be called hard skills. In a more recent uh, event in NIT Agartala, uh, in their convocation when I mentioned this, that according to me, communication skills are not just soft skills, but are hard skills. And they are absolutely essential for doing anything useful in life for yourself and for others. I was followed by the AICT chairman, Professor Anil Sastrabuddhe, who gave me a new word. He says, Professor Fatak, these are not just hard skills. These are life skills. 
our lives depend on it. And truly, when you reflect on it, you will find that you spend the first three, four, five years of your childhood actually mastering the art of communication. Verbal communication is what you master first. And then you spend the rest of your lifetime in attempting to understand written communication. But we all know the value of effective communication. We know the value of learning to communicate well. Sadly, in the Indian educational system, effective communication has not been as emphatically dealt with as it ought to have been. In fact, this should have been perfected in the school stages. Since that does not happen, we are forced to attend to it in our college education. And you may not be surprised to know that our colleges also do not necessarily do a good job. And therefore, when very smart, very intelligent, and very knowledgeable students from your colleges come to do their master's and PhD, they have to do a compulsory course on communication skills because we find these are the skills which they lack. Any skills are harnessed by using tools and practicing both the tools, their usage, and using the tools to learn something about the topic, namely effective communication. I would like to remind all of you of a great statement made by late Abraham Lincoln, who was tasked to fail a tree. And he famously said, if I have six hours to cut a tree, I will spend four of them on sharpening my X. That was the important he associated with the tool, namely the X with which to cut the tree. Do we spend that much time in polishing our tools? What are the tools that we commonly use? Take very basic tools, dictionary, thesaurus, not just for English, but for any language. How often do we use these tools? How often do we spend time to familiarize ourselves to find out synonyms? These are important aspects which are very, very essential in building effective communication skills. Today, you have information technology tools. So you don't have to spend time in sharpening those tools. Somebody else has already sharpened them, made them available. But do we spend enough time in familiarizing ourselves with those tools and using them effectively? Take, for example, simple word processing tools. Many of you would be using Microsoft Word, which is a good commercial product. Most of us here use LibreOffice or OpenOffice, which is an open source product. But nevertheless, the fundamental question that I would like to ask you is, if you use these tools indeed, how is it that there is even a single spelling mistake in any post that you make ever, anywhere, that any question paper that you set, that any notes that you prepare and give, if you tolerate a single mistake of a comma or a full stop or a punctuation mark, or a spelling mistake of a word, or wrong grammatical phase, who is to be blamed? Do you lack tools? No. You lack the use of those tools. And the reason you lack the use of those tools is you have not spent sufficient time in familiarizing yourself with those tools and practicing with those tools. Practicing with the skills that you are trying to acquire is an absolutely important thing. I mean, the best example is the great Eklavya, who learned the entire archery and became the world's topmost archer entirely by practicing self. He practically discovered and invented archery in some way. Of course, there has been only one Eklavya in our country, at least in mythology. And there are not many. Most of us require some help. And that is the reason why such workshops, such engagement with large number of people would help. But I will like to remind you that none of these is a substitute for your own individual hard work on your own time. I am tempted to recite a personal experience when in early 70s I was a young teacher. And uh, I wanted to ensure that when I give a lecture, it is delivered well and succinctly. So I purchased a tape recorder. You may not appreciate that today. In those days, the cost of that tape recorder was 750 rupees. And my salary was 350-20-EV-something-something. Dash 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 something. Uh, in fact, my wife was mighty pleased. She thought I got the tape recorder for her to listen to the music. 
she was quite surprised, very sadly surprised, when she found out that I was standing in front of a mirror in the night and speaking to myself and to that tape recorder for one hour. And then I was listening to that recorded lecture for one hour, making copious notes, and again repeating the silly thing. She did not understand why I was doing it. But I will tell you that practice helped me to understand that what I think is a flow and flow actually consists of a whole lot of ah, oh, eh, and so on. My talks had actually several errors, not just grammatical errors, but errors in content. Most important, there were errors in the flow. And that meant that I had to re-prepare myself, reorganize myself. It has helped me tremendously. I know many of you would be doing something similar with one aspect or the other aspect of the communication. Point I'm trying to make is, there is no substitute for hard work in acquiring any skills. Do not forget how you acquired your first communication skills. I mentioned you are learning the basic communication skills when you are two years, three years, four years, five years old. Do you know how a child learns the verbal communication? The child learns because of three or four extraordinary characteristics which all of us have. God has been kind enough to endow us with them. Every child has great curiosity, spirit of inquiry. Every child has great boldness to ask questions, including silly questions. Every child has extraordinary perseverance. The child never gives up. Do we retain that ability in later life? Do we find a hard world which we cannot understand? And do we give up by not understanding that meaning of that word? Or do we persist, persevere, and look at the examples, look at the meaning of that word, and so on? And last but not the least, the child does all of these with extraordinary sense of passion and involvement. Do we retain all of that? I often tell my friends that rediscover the child in you and you will become the best learner and therefore the best educator. Of course, you have to do something better than being just a child because a child does not have two extraordinary qualities which are qualities acquired because of our social existence. These are humility and ethics. None of these are natural, born characteristics of a human being. By nature, when we are born, we are actually very possessive. We don't want to share anything. And we are, of course, not very humble. But these two traits we acquire as we grow up. Anyway, I digress. So let me come back to the main point that I was trying to make. The Enhancement of human interaction is possible only when our communication skills are perfect. In the days when physical human interaction is becoming both costlier and rarer, and in any case, it is not possible to have human interaction with all the best experts in the world. However, a most important element that we have is people around us. And as Professor Sethi mentioned, People around you are your best resources. Do you know I have spent 45 years here and I have learned enormously from all my colleagues and all my students. I remember how I got involved in this course. I actually, there was a lecture in our convocation hall, some 1,500 students sitting, and Professor Sethi and Professor Sundar were addressing that first lecture. Partha was also there, I think. And I was so excited in that short interval of one hour, I learned so much about what it means to communicate. I can never forget that. My dear friends, please remember what Professor Sethi said. Learn from every human interaction and create human interaction wherever feasible and wherever it is not easily available. The most easily available access is to your own colleague. One of the reasons why I insisted on this model of several people coming together in a remote center is not so much that you can listen to the experts from here and they can answer your question. That is important, but incidental. What is most important is those 20, 30, 40 people who assemble at a place and actually enjoy an opportunity to interact with each other, learn from each other, and strengthen each other. That is the main purpose behind this model, and I'm sure you will you will enjoy this workshop. I would like to tell you something more 
for which I would like to draw a diagram. You'll notice I'm not using any PowerPoint slides. I am increasingly getting convinced that PowerPoint has spoiled all of us, and we have become far less effective. Uh, particularly, those of us, I also use PowerPoint still, but I use minimal number of sentences and words. No slide of mine will have more than one sentence. I will tell you the simple reason. When I used to use very busy slides, I used to find that whenever I flip a slide and start talking, for first three minutes, everybody is only reading the slide. Then nobody is listening to me. So I started writing only one sentence, which people can read in five seconds. And then they have no choice but to listen to me. They have no choice but to look at me to understand my body language, to understand my words, and that helped. Not that what I speak is extraordinarily important, but you would like that if there is a talk being given, then it is the talk that you would like to concentrate. Modern technology permits us to record these talks and permits people to listen to these talks at their homes and at their hostels. You know what is the greatest advantage? The greatest advantage is in a classroom, if you are teaching me and I'm listening to you, and I don't understand something, I don't have an opportunity to rewind you. You have spoken like a radio. Radio ek bar bolta. You have spoken, I have heard, if I have not understood, bad luck, you are going to go ahead. As a result, in the first 15 minutes, if I have serious doubts and if I have serious misunderstanding, the remaining 45 minutes of my time is wasted. Your time is being fruitfully deployed for perhaps some others, but not for me. And if you look at a class of 40 or 50 or 60, this could cause a problem. As was mentioned, the flipped classroom has been experimented extensively in IIT by several colleagues. I have myself done that. And I can tell you from first-hand experience and the experience of many, including actual research findings by two of my colleagues, Prof. Sana Murthy and Prof. Sridhar Iyer, that the engagement level of students enhances from an average 40% to average 80%. It is this part which we have now termed blended MOOCs, and we have been offering the blended MOOCs courses to about 11,500 students of 50 participating autonomous institutions. We'll be taking this forward next semester, and next year, and year after that. IIT Bombay X actually is not just a platform for giving online courses, which we'll continue to do, but we have extended the platform to support blended courses where the participating institutions, teachers, and students get access to their own scores on a continuous basis for the online courses. They get facility for their teachers to add their local marks and to come up with a composite grade. This you may not know. But for the first time, not only in this country, but anywhere in the world, 50 autonomous institutions have come together to study three subjects jointly with IIT Bombay and their own local teachers. And most important, all these 11,500 students will get their final grade in their university with a composite score, part score coming from the online assessment and part score coming from the face-to-face -face assessment. I call this effort the mainstreaming of MOOCs, because as you know, massive open online courses, however popular they are, unless their credits are recognized by someone, either by industry or by the universities, people will not give much value to it. This effort has succeeded, and this effort is likely to be adopted. I was told in Moscow by a Russian group of universities that they would be putting this in place uh, next year. And so in Washington, I met a large number of university people who want to do this for community colleges. So India, fortunately, has had the first important pilot, which is being taken as an indicator of things to come by the rest of the world. Now I come to the last concluding point, where I will actually seek your collaboration. As I already mentioned, you are pioneers in some sense. Because all of you have shown the courage and willingness to spend money from your own pocket to participate in this workshop. I was talking to AICT chairman, and he said that forget a few teachers, but all our teachers across the country. We were sitting and counting the numbers. 
There are about 9,000 institutions approved, professional institutions approved by AICT. Many of them are engineering colleges, about 3,500. The management colleges, and there are polytechnics. And he said that most of our teachers do not appreciate the importance of modern tools. They do not appreciate that the pedagogy or methodology of teaching learning is changing rapidly. And they do not know how to handle online courses and blended courses. They are weak in communication. He was making a general statement. And their understanding and usage of technology is very limited. So he suggested to me that instead of the T10KT project where we train 10,000 teachers at a time, would IIT Bombay be willing to undertake a much larger national scale project, which I laughingly called T500KT. That means train 500,000 teachers who are the numbers approximately across the country who need to adopt this new technology, who need to adopt these new tools. We are working on a project proposal, and we will be soon putting, be putting in place some three or four modules. Tentatively, we have thought of one foundation module, one module in effective communication, which is something of this course, and another module in pedagogy for uh, online and blended learning, and how to use these tools for effective teaching. Now I come to the most important point. It is almost certain that one of the modules to be used will be an effective communications module. We are unlikely to run it as this kind of T10KT model, because even five days coming together of people at remote centers is not easy. Not only it is costly, but it takes a lot of toll on people's time. The model that we'll follow will be largely online for the foundation course. And an online course with just two days of interaction. There will be, therefore, much larger emphasis on the online work, much larger emphasis on peer evaluation, and much larger emphasis on collaborative online work by the community. I have made it clear to my own colleagues and to AICT that I would not like to build a model where IIT Bombay jointly with IIT Kharagpur just delivers these workshops. My ambition is to build a very large collaborative community across the country, comprising of teachers, all of you, all of us. And from amongst these will come out a few who will be willing to take a leadership role, say, in editing contents, say, in monitoring discussion forums over the years. So this is not a one-time job. I conclude by saying that you are the pioneers not only in demonstrating to the country and to the world that look, when you see a value in something, you are willing to pay from your pocket. My appeal to you is, would you be able to show your willingness to participate in this much larger effort and become not just the pioneers, but the pioneer leaders of the future collaborative groups that ought to emerge in our teaching community across the country, at least for professional colleges. Of course, you will agree that sooner or later, we'll have to go over to cover all higher educational institutions, and finally, the school education. I'll conclude by once again thanking all of you. I must say one thing about my own colleagues here. I've been conducting these programs for like six years now. You know that whenever we work more than what is required to be done as per our own job profiles, we do expect some recognition. Usually, such recognition comes in the form of an honorarium that we give. What I'm very proud to tell you is that in last six years, not a single teacher, colleague of mine in IIT Bombay, not a single teacher ever asked whether there is going to be any honorarium for the effort that they are taking. I am sure most of you would follow that philosophy and that passion. I wanted to thank my colleagues for this extraordinary gesture. Of course, we do give some honorarium to them because there is a government funding to this project. In fact, I have had some very uh, peculiar incidences. One teacher wrote, wrote back an email saying, oh, you give honorarium for this exciting work? I thought in engaging with 10,000 teachers at a time itself is a great honorarium. Anyway, 
I am sure that many of you are as passionate. I have seen many passionate teachers across the country when I took a Bharat Yatra. Uh, I, I took one year sabbatical and went around the country visiting small colleges, whether it is a small NIST in Bahrampur or whether it is a NITTE in a coastal area or whether it is a small college in Vasai. Each place I have come across passionate teachers who do something extraordinary. It is my ambition to collect all such passionate teachers in the country and make them to assume a leadership and guiding position for the benefit of all teachers and subsequently for the benefit of all students. Professor Sundar suggests that there could be some time for a couple of questions. So I will start arbitrarily going to some centers. I see Maulana Azad National Institute of Technology. I can see a lot of people in Bhopal. Over to you, Bhopal, for some general comments. Hello. Good morning, sir. I have traveled all the way from Bilai because that, there was no remote centers in Bilai this time. Oh. And I was keenly interested in attending the workshop on technical communication. And the online courses which I have come across, it was very beneficial and proved a great help to us and even uh, sharing with the faculties over there in my college. Very good. Thank you very much. I appreciate your taking the efforts. Belai to Bhopal is not a small distance. Uh, in future, we'll ensure that there will be more and more remote centers near your place where you can attend easily. Thank you so much. Let me go over to uh, D.Y. Patil Institute of Engineering, Pune. Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. This is Dr. Shalaka Parkar from D.Y. Patil College of Akurdi, affiliated to the University of Pune. Sir, I really thank you for your insightful talk on the need and importance of communication skills and soft skills. But nevertheless, I, if I could request you to help us, sir, on this front, because I am heading the soft skills department at my college, uh, wherein we are grooming the students on soft skills and communication skills as per the inputs that we receive from the industry, saying that our students are not employable because they lack in this uh, area. But, sir, uh, we are just talking about the importance of these subjects where they do not have a pedestal as a subject is a, in the curriculum. And sir, as you rightly said, people don't uh, value a course until its credits are recognized by the industry or the university. So sir, in case you have an opportunity to talk to the chairman AICT, could we have some directives from the AICT and experts like you to the universities to include this subject as a part of the curriculum and uh, you know, have a viva or a theory paper and you know, have prescribed norms for faculty members uh, you know, to teach this subject, sir. It will get a concrete pedestal. If I could request you to help us in this front. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate your concern. If I am not mistaken, there was already a directive because I know a colleague of mine, Dr. Agu Shahugaukar, chaired a committee of AICT which stipulated as obligatory courses, two obligatory courses, of course, I believe they were prescribed at the postgraduate level of professional education, knowledge engineering education. One was on effective communications and the other was on research methodologies. I was under the impression that an effective communication skills course is part of our undergraduate syllabus because it, I think, exists in the model syllabus of AICT. Of course, it is uh, named variously and treated differently. Because I remember when I was a student in 1964, there was a course on communication. Uh, it was supposed to be English communication. I sadly remember that I neither learned English nor learned communication from that course. Uh, but uh, by just putting a course merely as a part of the syllabus, nothing much is achieved. What is important is for all our teachers to understand how important the knowledge of communication is. So I will definitely heed your advice and suggestion and we'll speak to Professor Sastrabuddhi on the first opportunity, not only making it obligatory, but strengthening the infrastructure. In fact, you will notice that he and I agree entirely that our emphasis in the next wave of skilling and uh, uh, training our teachers and empowering them would be actually to empower them in these skills as well. But let me ask you one question. Why are communication skills considered to be covered only by one separate subject? If I am teaching computer programming, 
or if my colleague Gayatonde is teaching thermodynamics or somebody is teaching history of world, don't you think indirectly and directly emphasizing good communication in whatever subject you teach is equally important? Do you think communication has to be handled separately? Because the moment you think it is to be handled separately, everybody, including students and teachers, sort of assume that it is relevant only to get the grades in that course. Elsewhere in life, it is not important. How is it that in your own subjects that you teach, if a student makes a submission, do you actually ask that student to rework that submission by removing all the errors? Just because it is a technical submission, do you not end up giving that student some partial marks for content that have been given, completely ignoring the sloppy communication? I think we as teachers are at fault. We have not only to recognize the importance of communication in every subject that we deal with, but we have to emphatically convey it to our students and contribute to their becoming better communication. I don't think communications can be handled by just one separate course. It has to be handled as a all-pervasive component of our entire education system. Sorry for a longish answer, but this is my conviction. UV Patel, over to you, sir. Good morning, sir. This is Dr. Kiran Amin, as a coordinator of uh, this workshop. And, uh, uh, our students and our faculty members are very curious to attend this workshop because they have seen this entire schedule. Uh, uh, of course, uh, for the PG students and uh, those who are doing pursuing their PhD, so definitely that will be helpful to them to uh, enhance their skills in that especially uh, technical writing and teaching also. Thank you very much for your comments. I am happy that your research scholars are also participating. They are the future teachers, so I welcome all of them. This is Pillai Institute. Over to you. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. This is Swapnil Tambe from Somaya Polytechnic. Sure. And I am um, attending this uh, technical communication uh, lecture at uh, Pillai's Engineering College. Uh, I think this is a good platform for all uh, teachers and a very good course uh, designed. Uh, I, I think the quiz sessions were quite good. And even the Moodle session was good. Thank you very much, sir, for this uh, great initiative. So, Swapnil, I want to ask you a question. Since you have taken the trouble to come all the way from uh, uh, Somaya College to Pillai Institute to attend this, I take it that you are one of the more enthusiastic people. Would you be personally willing to participate in the larger national effort as a contributor? Over to you. Sir, actually, I so this is very near to me. <laughs> OK. This is very near to you. So therefore, you will not participate in the national effort? Or will you? Yes, yes, sir. Very good. Thank you. Federal Institute of Science. Over to you, Federal Institute. It was a very inspiring speech you gave us today. And you were just focusing on how teachers have to become very passionate about their teaching. The brightest aspect of it was like, when I started, I am a retired hand. Uh, I had about 34 years of teaching experience with the backlog. Still, I am fascinated how much into this area of communication skills and teaching. In this I am teaching MBA students as well as BTEC. The very name of the course was something like technical communication. But as you said, communication is rather a very vast area can't be confined to the uh, area of technical education alone because it, it actually uh, comprises the, the competence level of the students have to be sharpened at the presentation level because in Kerala what we experience is from the employability part students are lagging much behind. These days, they have accepted something called a technical university. And the first semester, I said it goes like two hours at a part for language learning. Personally, I feel that's not the right way wherein 
we have to start with the pressure because what they need is the kind of communication competence the uh, inbuilt potential worked out through more of self expression areas rather than repeating and pronunciation practice and all that that is being done in the lab as a person so much forceful in this particular communication area could you please uh, put in inputs into those authorities to tell them that in the first semester what is really needed is boosting their self confidence presentation skill sharpening make them come out of their cocoons and start facing the world with real presentation yeah, thank you very much for thank your you. observation but i would like to tell you that if you have to actually do that effectively in the first semester in our colleges we should be doing nothing else but just build communication skills now unfortunately the so called stereotype course structure of eight semesters four years etc etc does not give us that flexibility all that we can do is try to supplement our efforts by giving more and more online material and more opportunity for students to practice on their own and to discuss and interact with others thank you very much for your observation sona college of technology yes over to you sona good morning sir we are pleased and privileged to be the participants of this technical communication workshop and very happy to listen to your voice after 3 months oh where did you listen to it 3 months ago iit bombay oh you had come here she is the coordinator the work, i said yes. that is cheating yes i am okay. the workshop coordinator right right thank you so much <laughs> i am happy that you have so many uh, uh, colleagues there all the best to you and thank you for participating yes, uh techno india salt lake kolkata let us go to eastern part of kolkata hello over to you kolkata uh, it's a, it's, a, it's a very interesting course to us uh, uh, uh most of the participants are basically from my college only okay and uh, my question is very administrative part basically uh this is a self finance uh, program uh 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 we are very much eager to do this kind of self finance uh, program in my college as well but can we do this kind of self finance program in the name of uh, a particular department let's say uh, uh we are uh, working on say uh, workshop on uh, network uh, or wireless communication it's a part of electronics department see and it's conducted by iit bombay that means the resource person is given by iit bombay but it's conducted by electronics department of techno india and in that case to organize this workshop can we take sponsorship from different vendors or some different publishers etc to organize it more uh, bigger way to <laughs> get more participant to <laughs> give refreshment <laughs> to yeah yeah i understand you are talking about getting sponsorship from uh, local people and so on i don't want to get into the discussion of either the financials or the fiduciary ethics that all of us must follow but i note your point and i'll keep that in mind and i will respond separately perhaps through a moodle posting during the next few days uh, giving all of you an overall idea about the larger program that we have and more such self finance programs that will be running your observation is important and interesting i'll respond to it later thank you let me go to the medicaps institute over to you good morning sir dr satsangi from medicaps college it's a really a great uh, effort on the part of all of us being together today and enjoying this course on communication technical communication i fully understand that communication is a very slippery business one say something other understand something else and always it will keep happening because all languages are little fuzzy or hazy thank you a lot we'll be more clearer after this workshop thank you thank you very much well i i take your leave uh, i would i would like to request professor viren sethi and uh, professor sundar uh, to come back and take over the reins of uh, this session uh, i think i already exceeded my time thank you